The order has been successful. Please await lots of vegetarian protein goodies. So I'm just about to place an order for some food. I've got a whole list of stuff, about 150 pounds worth of food there. Let's see if you can spot a trend. Okay, so here we have it. We have a high protein chocolate cream pudding. We've got some whey protein ice cream, low fat mozzarella cheese, protein pancakes. Snickers protein bar, some more protein bars, more protein bars, then a whole milk protein pizza. Uh, we got protein bread, we've got protein baps, pasta, and some protein crisps. All coming to a total of 147. Did you spot the trend yet? Yeah, it's all high in protein. But did you also notice it's all vegetarian food? Yeah, this week I've been challenged to be vegetarian for the week. So I'm ordering a whole bunch of high protein vegetarian food to show you that you can still meet your protein goals and be a vegetarian. Ah, look what's arrived. It's here. Let's get this open. Look at all the goodies. Protein bread, carb killers, pasta, got ice cream in there somewhere. Ah, I'll run through all of these protein goodies in a second. Okay, so it's the end of the week and I didn't quite get to go through that box like I said I would. Don't worry, I did manage to record what I had to eat this week so you can still get to see that. I just didn't go through the box and review every single food in there. Like I said, I did record all of the foods, well most of the foods I had this week, especially the ones that were high in protein, so you can still have a look at what I managed to eat and get some ideas from it. So what I'm going to do is show you the foods I had, talk over them, and basically review the meals. So let's get started. This is meal number one. So it was a Nando's meal. I ended up getting a plain salad, a corn on the cob, and a veggie pitta. Now this meal wasn't actually that high in protein. It was Pretty tasty though. I actually have to say it was better than a chicken pitta. Yeah, don't shoot me on that one. That whole meal was 537 calories. It was 80 grams of carbs, so quite high in carbs, which a lot of vegetarian food always is. It was 23 grams of protein, which is pretty decent, and 12 grams of fat, so not too bad on the fats either. Like I said, pretty tasty, probably not the best choice if you're trying to eat a low calorie meal with that's high in protein, there's plenty of other options out there. This was at the beginning of the week when I hadn't really planned out what I was going to do for food and what I was going to try and get to meet my protein goals. I hadn't been shopping yet either, so that's why I was kind of stuck with that. But as the week went on, it got better and I had better meals. So let's get on to meal number two. So here I created this taco bean thing. I don't know what you'd call it, it was like kidney beans, sweet corn, some sauce, cheese, yogurt, a whole combination of stuff. So this meal was 466 calories and it was 32 grams of protein, 53 grams of carbs and 11 grams of fat. Now most of the protein came from this Icelandic yogurt. It's very low in fat, zero fats in fact, and then the protein and the carbs are not too bad either. The other things that I used to boost up the protein was the cheese. Cheese had 9 grams of protein in there. The beans had 6 grams of protein. The soft shell taco boat thing that I had was 4 grams of protein. Um, it was a very tasty meal. I had a salad on the side as well. And yeah, it was all in all very good. So something I actually got from Muscle Foods, that box that you saw at the start was protein pizza. It was three protein pizza bases, like this gluten-free thin base that you just put your own toppings on and make your pizza. So this actually turned out really well and I was surprised by how good it tasted. Now, it's not no Domino's pizza, but it is actually really tasty. So take a look at this. So this is the base. 
This is 30 grams of protein alone from this. So this meal had 49 grams of protein. It had 25 grams of carbs. For a pizza, that's amazing, and only 16 grams of fat. So the base had 30 grams of protein. The cheese, the one that I got from Muscle Foods, the mozzarella had 12 grams of protein. And then I also mixed in some low fat cheese as well, because I wasn't sure how that Muscle Foods cheese would taste. I mean, it was pretty good in the end. Um, it didn't melt that well, but it wasn't bad. But yeah, I did mix in some cheddar cheese and that was obviously a lot better. There was low fat cheddar cheese and that gave me six grams of protein, which bring it to a total of 49 grams of protein, which is amazing for a vegetarian meal. Now I made my own sauce, just used um, some tomato puree, some passata, and some herbs and spices. Topped it with some mushrooms, onion and chili, keeping it simple, and then whacked it in the oven. It turned out really good. And yeah, this is how it looked. As you can see, I polished it off and I had a clean plate at the end. I haven't really spoke about breakfast so far. Now, what I do for breakfast is always vegetarian. I don't ever eat meat at breakfast. Um, I don't really get time to cook anything like that. I wake up really early and I have to be out of the house. So I actually make my breakfast the night before. What I make is overnight oats. I pretty much do the same thing throughout the whole year apart from maybe one day a week. It's quick and it's easy. I do it purely out of convenience and it tastes really good too. So what I do for this meal is weigh out some oats in the bowl, then I add my protein powder. After I've added my protein powder, I give the whole thing a mix. Now, if you don't give it a mix, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go lumpy, so make sure you give it a mix. Then, after I've mixed it up, I add coconut milk. The only reason I use this coconut milk is purely because it's low in calories you can use whatever liquid you want. Normal milk, almond milk, whatever you want. So just add it in, mix it all up, and that's it. Now, if it's a bit thick, add some water to just kind of loosen it up and make sure it's a little bit runny, because overnight it will go even thicker. You can always add more liquid in the morning, so try not to make it too runny. You're better off leaving it a little thicker than making it too runny. From there, this is the best bit, I add fruit. Now. Normally, I go for watermelon, yeah, it might sound a bit disgusting, but don't knock it until you try it. Chocolate and watermelon go so well. From there, all you need to do is whack it in the fridge, leave it overnight, and then you've got yourself breakfast the next morning. This meal gives is 372 calories, only 31 carbs, 9 grams of fat, and 40 grams of protein. So it's a really, really good meal for getting your protein intake in so early in the day. Now something else I tried from Muscle Food was this protein bread. Now, I was pretty skeptical of this. Someone told me about it before and said it was disgusting. I used it to make a sandwich and I also had some protein crisps on the side with that sandwich. Now, in terms of purely from a calorie point of view, this protein bread is incredible for vegetarians. The bread is only 30 grams of carbs for two slices, so basically like a normal small loaf. But here's the kicker, it has 30 grams of protein in two slices. So each slice is 15 grams of protein. And it's really low in fat too. Just purely from a macronutrient and calorie point of view, it's a winner for vegetarians. From a taste point of view, I have to say it was pretty good. Now, it's not the best bread you're ever going to eat, so I wouldn't expect that. But in terms of just a nice sandwich, it does the job. It was really good, I have no complaints. The crisps, however, they were a bit weird. I don't know, they're not your best crisps, I'm gonna say, but they do the job as well. It was only 39 grams of carbs and 14 grams of fat, and most of that fat came from the cheese and mayo that I put in the sandwich. So the bread gave me 30 grams of protein, the crisps gave me 21 grams of protein, yeah, crisps, 21 grams of protein with only five grams of carbs, and it was really low in fat too and then the cheese gave me six grams of protein that I put in that sandwich. So all in all, I have to say that was a winner and I would recommend it, but everyone's taste buds are different, so try it out, see what you think. In terms of meals, that was pretty much it. I didn't really record that much else. Those meals I had there, I just kind of varied them through the week, so I had a lot of beans and pulses and lentils and stuff like that, and then the yogurt was used a lot, and the other thing was low-fat cheese was a real big kicker as well. Obviously. Whey protein was really good 
to fill out the blanks where I was low in protein, but I also used some of this other stuff as well. The first thing I used was protein bars. Now I love these protein bars, carb killers, as you could probably tell, that's why I've ordered so many. And by the way, if you're wondering why that protein order was so expensive, it's because of these bars I ordered, I think six boxes, and it's 20 pound a box, or just under 20 pound a box. So that's why the, the bill went up. But the rest of the food was actually pretty cheap. The bread was cheap, everything else was quite cheap. Yeah, like it's back to these protein bars, these protein bars are amazing taste brilliant and they give you 20 around 23 grams of protein there's a few other things I didn't I ordered from muscle foods that I didn't actually get to try out some of the stuff I've had before some I haven't so I'll just go through that now the first thing was the protein pasta I've had that before it's pretty good um, for a portion it gives you 50 grams of protein and that you can't complain with um, it's not your best Italian pasta in the world so I wouldn't expect that but it is pretty good you just have to cook it for a while because it does have a bit of a chewy texture to it next thing was protein ice cream from Weihei and this ice cream is really good it has a bit of an aftertaste but as for an ice cream that's made out of whey it is delicious um, low in fats, low in carbs and really high in protein so that's a winner and it's a really good way of upping your protein intake as a vegetarian without you know scoffing down loads of shakes another thing that I didn't actually have this week was eggs I purposely tried to leave them out because I know a lot of vegetarians don't eat eggs but eggs are a really great way of upping your protein intake um, if you do eat eggs that is so per egg you can get about six grams of protein you do have to be aware of you do have to be a bit aware of the fats though um, with every egg obviously you're having about four grams of fat four to five grams of fat so you have to be a bit careful with that um, you can always remove the yolk and lower the fat and have a lot more egg white but then you are losing a lot of the protein as well so you're going to have to bulk up the amount of egg whites you're having something else I ordered from Muscle Foods was this Snickers protein bar now the macros are pretty good not too high in fats carbs around 20 grams and the proteins around 20 grams I've seen better macronutrients but I was purely intrigued because it's a Snickers bar and I wanted to see what it tastes like and I haven't actually got around to tasting it I've heard good things about it so give it a go if you fancy a Snickers bar that, and you want to fill it up with protein something else I ordered with these little chocolate mousse protein pots now they were really low in fat um, really low in carbs high in protein great calories and macros but they tasted disgusting seriously I had one spoon and I did do it, I had to throw it away it went straight in the bin not nice at all so I'd give that one a miss something else I ordered was these protein pancakes now they just tasted like normal pancakes to me they're plain didn't have much flavor I'm sure if you added stuff to it they'd be delicious um, the other thing I didn't get to try was this protein baps the rolls if they taste anything like the bread, I give them a thumbs up, but I don't know. They were really good on calories and protein as well. Now, I'm really glad I did this little experiment. It taught me three things. Number one was that apart from spending £150 on supplements, I actually saved quite a bit of money because all that food will last me a while, whereas meat is very expensive. The other thing is that I didn't actually miss meat that much at all. I could quite easily be a vegetarian for the rest of my life. Number two is I actually felt like I ate more food when I was a vegetarian. So if you think a chicken breast might give you about 40 to 60 grams of protein depending on the size of the breast. Whereas a 100 gram bowl of yogurt only gives you 10 grams of protein. So in terms of equivalency, you have to eat a lot more yogurt to get the same amount of protein and get the same amount of calories. Now this is not the case with every single food. But some of the vegetarian protein sources give you a lot more volume on the plate than meat would. So I think I'm going to have a lot more yogurt and things like that in my diet now to help bulk out my meals. And finally, while it wasn't impossible to hit my protein goal using vegetarian food, it was pretty difficult. I have to hit 160 grams of protein a day. You could work out the amount of protein and calories you need by going here. It's a fat loss calorie calculator that will tell you exactly how much you need to be eating to burn body fat and it will tell you how much protein you need to be eating too. So like I said, go here to download that. But yeah, 
it's not completely impossible to hit your protein goals. You have to be a little bit more strategic, be a bit clever about what you eat and actually plan your day a bit more too. And you're gonna have to have things like protein products and shakes and bars and things like that. Okay, the natural food is really gonna help as well. So all your low fat dairy products, your yogurt, your cheeses, your beans, your pulses, lentils, they're brilliant. But it's still very difficult to get a large amount of protein in without having those products. If you can do that, you could be a vegetarian and still hit your protein goals. So that's this week's episode done. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And if you did find it useful, make sure you share the video. And if there's anything you'd like me to cover in these videos, please let me know in the comments too. Uh -huh.